amount of the green flag fever. Tell them to run and not to wear it. Tell them to go off and not to come back. Because <laughs> Welcome to the Deliverance Centre. We thank you for joining our service today. Our service will be starting shortly. We invite you to join our Zone of Power Bible study this and every Wednesday as well as our international Zoom prayer meeting on Friday evenings live on Facebook or by calling the number on screen. Please visit our Facebook page for further details.
hallelujah, hallelujah to the way maker, the miracle worker, the promise keeper, the light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You're worthy to be praised. Lord, from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is worthy to be praised. And we are indeed grateful today to be found in the land of the living. So we can bring a sacrifice of praise to the house of God. Come to offer unto you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and of praise. Father, we thank you for your loving kindness towards us, your people. I want to take the opportunity to greet you all this morning in the wonderful, exalted name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. A special greetings to all the members of the Church of God Worldwide Mission International in the United Kingdom and wherever you are in the world, we greet you all this morning in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. A special greeting and welcome also to our internet family. Thank you so much for joining us today in our morning service without a shadow of a doubt. I know that you will be truly blessed and encouraged today, strengthened by the word of God. When I left here last Sunday, I had so much messages on my phone of people um, just responding to say how blessed and how encouraged they were. One go on to say that they were in a real state or a situation around them over a couple of weeks and really couldn't find no way out. But as they listened to the word of God, it was such a relevant word for them that lifted them out of that situation and cause them to stand today in the word of God. And I, I just pray, I just pray today that the word of the Lord would have such a impact on your life. I want you to swing your heart door widely open and make capacity to receive the words of the Lord. Let us pray. The Bible reminds us that the effectual fervent prayer of a right standing man, of a righteous man, it avails much. You know, and often time when you can't change a situation in the physical, then we got to go in the spiritual, in the realms of the spirit and begin to seek help from our father, a good, good father a faithful father, a faithful God. So Father, we give thanks this morning to you with a grateful heart. We, we thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. We thank you for where you have brought us from. We can say through many dangers and toils and snares, we have already come and we want to thank you for that all sufficient grace the grace that has brought us safe thus far that grace will be able to sustain lord and to keep us and so we want to thank you for all of the benefits of life for all that you have done for us father we thank you that you are a faithful father throughout generation and one generation to another generation can always testify of the goodness of a god who was always sustained a god was always provided the psalmist reminded us that he was young and now he was old he has never seen the righteous forsaken he has never seen your seed begging for bread Father, we thank you today. We will, we will never suffer. We will never have to beg. 
All we need to do is to turn our eyes to the hills from whence cometh our help. Because our help cometh from you. Yeah. Oh, the almighty creator, Father. We thank you that you're a father who cares. And you're a father who shares. You're an high priest who can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. And when we talk about a father who cares today, you care about what's happening around us. You care about us, Lord, in our brokenness. You care for us, Lord, in our times of sorrow. We thank you, Lord, for this town of Reading that you have placed us geographically to be ambassadors and to be representative of the kingdom of God. You have placed us here to be a beacon. You have placed us here to be a light. You know that over the last 24 hours that we have come under attack and people have lost their lives and others are wounded. Others are fearful, Lord, as they would walk the streets but we pray now in the name of Jesus oh, I pray for your divine intervention I pray for the families of those who are bereaved this morning people are just walked out to enjoy a, a, a little time out and just to socialize after many weeks of locked in and today they are not there because they have been snatched. And we pray this morning, Father, in the name of Jesus, for your divine intervention. We're, we're looking to you today, Father, for your help. We're looking to you today to sustain in the name of Jesus. Help us to realize, Lord, the word of God tells us that when we see all these devastation and things that are taking place around us, we need to look up to you because our redemption draw it nigh and father we pray that we'll continually trust you then we'll continually be sustained by the words of the almighty god father i pray even as i will be entering into your words in a little while from now i pray for an anointing an anointing that break and destroy yoke in the name of jesus this today, Lord, it's not about eloquence, and it's not just, Lord God, it's a total dependency on you. I'm not just saying words of platitude, but I pray today that these would be meaningful words, Lord. I mean, that would have an impact on the life of the hearers in the name of Jesus. And so I take authority in Jesus' name over anything that is unhealthy, and happy or unholy that would want to stand in the way of progress we render them null and void lord we arrest them now in the name of jesus and we say that god in this place today that you will arise and as you arise that the enemies will be scattered yes lord send an anointing lord one that break and destroy every yoke in the name of jesus Father, we commit ourselves into your hands. Look into you, the author and the finisher of our salvation. We give you praise. We give you honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, today is Father's Day. The normal Father's Day, our women's ministry would be leading the service today. And then... Um, we as men would just be enjoy watching them minister. Um, but this morning, because of the way the situation is, they can't be physically here. But they have sent us a message which we will listen to now in Jesus' name.
Hallelujah. So we want to thank God today for all that he has done. And we want to thank him for the way in which he has blessed us, kept us, and continually sustaining us. I'm so grateful today to be found in the land of the living and to be in my right mind. To give glory and honor to Almighty God. We've been looking at the theme a new dimension through uncommon faith. That's a new dimension through uncommon faith. And for today, I'd like to speak on the topic, a purposeful father. A purposeful father. I'm reading Psalm 78, verses 1 through to 8 from the English Standard Version. That's Psalm 78, verses 1 through to 8 from the ESV. Give here, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark saying from of old things that we have heard and known that our fathers have told us we will not hide them from their children but tell to them the coming generations the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and his wonders that he has done he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel which he commanded our fathers to teach to their children that the next generation might know them the children yet unborn and arise and tell them to their children so that they should set their hope in God and not forget the works of God but keep his commandment and that they should not be like their fathers a stubborn and rebellious generation a generation whose heart was not steadfast whose spirit was not faithful to God I want to start out this morning by stating three facts first of all today is Father's Day and this message serves as some necessary coaching to fathers secondly Fathers in this context does not only relate to men who are biological fathers, but also men who may be stepfathers, men who may be brothers, maybe uncles or cousins, men who may be godfathers, men who may be mentors, youth workers, etc., etc. And thirdly, 
even though this message is directed towards men, I want all women to stay engaged as I believe there will be some golden nuggets which can be of help to enabling and strengthening of the family unit through the role of fathers. Like I said earlier on, before the video played, that prior to COVID, we would have been together in this building, enjoying the program which the ladies' ministries would have planned. However, we are thankful to still be connecting, albeit virtually. So before we go to the message, I would like every woman who is watching to wish all men a happy Father's Day. Let me just give you another moment. I want you to wish all men, all men, a happy Father's Day. The message that you're going to hear today is really a message from my heart. For as a mature father, I'm sharing a message which comes with personal knowledge and experience, but also it is underpinned by the Word of God. Today I can stand here and say with total conviction that I'm proud to be a father. Not only am I a father now, but also a grandfather. And there are so many times when I'm just simply blown away by some of the feedback and comments that my children tell me, even in their adult lives. And so I thank God that together with Jemis and the help of the Lord, I can say we haven't done too badly. You see, brothers and sisters, there are many books which have been written about being good parents and one which are specifically dedicated to fathers. And these books are filled with personal testimonies. They are underpinned by powerful principles and are written for real people. However, no matter how good a read these books are, they will never replace the good book, the book of the Bible, which is filled with coaching for parents and yes, for fathers. And although the Bible was written so many years ago, it still offer guidance for real people facing real life issues. Or shall I say, real life issue today. For real fathers facing real life issues. And this is what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And verse number 15. For though we have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. So today we're going to take a look at the, this powerful topic a purposeful father. A purposeful father. So let me ask a question or make a statement why fathers matter. I wonder 
how many of us as men actually spend good quality time asking ourselves am I doing the right thing to become a great father it is my belief that not a lot of us have done this for you, traditionally the role of the father in the family unit was seen as being the, the hunter, the getter, the gatherer, who was responsible for going out to work and providing for their family. This setup back then left the role of raising children to mothers who would have been home and I'm sure mothers who would have been more likely to ask themselves this question, especially when children reach the terrible two age and started to acting up, they begin to push the boundaries. But I want you to roll on to the 21st century and the family unit has changed dramatically for now both parents are likely to be working and greater demands have been placed on men to step up to be great fathers notice I said great fathers are not simply good fathers we all know how easy it is biologically to become a father however what is often lost in the process is not realizing the full extent of the work the dedication the learning skill that really is required to become a great father and in a recent report published by the Office of National Statistics in 2019, there were 2.9 million single families in the United Kingdom. And 90% of these households were headed up by women, with only 10% headed up by men. And this meant that 90% of homes had no father figures. Stay with me. The report suggests that these figures have not changed much since 208, when the figure for lone parent family were 2.8 million. A well-known feminist leader was known to say, quote, fathers are biological necessity, but psychological absurdity, unquote. But we know from the principles outlined in the words of God, and based on a great number of researches about families, that fathers have a critical role in bringing strength, in bringing stability to their homes. Together with the mothers, there is a mixing of skills which are vital in shaping the physical, spiritual, psychological well-being of children. Fathers are an absolute necessity. The alarming truth is that in today's society, it has become the norm to see families without fathers. But let's take a look at some of the alarming consequences which have occurred as a result. For since the 1960s, youth violent crime have increased significantly. 
the number of illegitimate births have quadrupled. Divorce have also increased. Hence the rising number of single parent home. Children's education is also suffering, especially among black Caribbean boys. It is true that there are many factors driving these alarming facts. However, one of the main reasons of this breakdown in society is the missing father and the lack of spiritual leadership in the home. I'm talking about the men who will step up to the role now of giving and offering love to their children, care, and understand clearly that they are leaders in their home. Listen, I spend a good deal of time counseling couples who are getting married and also counseling those who have got married. And one of the common problems often center around the role of leadership. One of the common things that we talk about in this counseling session, it's around the role of leadership. William Wadsworth once wrote, the child is father of the man, meaning that what children are exposed to in their early and formative years will often shape the person and the character they become as adults. And therefore, if we want to reverse the trend for the next generation, teaching our children must remain as a top priority. The wise man Solomon said this in Proverbs 22 and verse number 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. The word train in the Greek, it means the word chinet, which means to bend. It means to shape. And so Solomon is saying that you need to shape a child in the way that they should go. And when they hold, they will not depart from it. I said earlier that the Bible is full of real instructions for real people. And so our base text from Psalm 78 is centered on the importance of the home and the role of parents, but especially of fathers. For it lays out instructions from Israel's history to the time of David, and it focuses on the failure of Israel. However, it doesn't just dwell on the failures, but also it records the faithfulness of God is on failing love and his patience. And if you study the text, one of the greatest failure of that time was parents, especially fathers. And so rules without relationship equals to rebellion. So if we're going to set rule as fathers, then we must also establish that we have relationship with our children. I want every man listening to this message on today to know that you are of great value and necessity to the home and to the raising up of children. Your strength and leadership, especially in these troubled times, 
they are necessary yeah necessary to the building up of our children for the next generation children today are looking for guidance children today they are looking for relationship and certainly they're looking for relationships with their fathers they are looking to see what they are likely to become in the future they may not say much but i want you to know that they are watching to see how you deal with problem in other words they're checking you out offline like the way you would behave yourself online and although they might not be saying much to you i want you to know that they are watching you to see how you deal with problem how you engage with their mothers how you behave when you're under pressure yes fathers let me remind you today that they are watching you these children also must be reminded about the goodness of god and how god has helped you you must talk to them about the price that you have paid in order to get to where you are often time when i'm speaking to my children and i'm telling them about the journey of life or some encounter that i had before they said to me dad we've heard it 100 times and i thank god because i can count i said to them this is mathematically sound now you're going to hear it 101 time because i have to tell you amen how how I got to where I am we hold this to our children they're watching to see how we behave when we are under pressure yes fathers today are the study guide for children of tomorrow let me say I said fathers today they are the study guide for the children of tomorrow and so then it means then that fathers truly matters fathers truly matter and so let me compound the case for support about this purposeful father a purposeful father now this may seems like a tough message to hear for both men and women but especially for men you may find it hard because you may not have known your father or even grown up with a strong father figure but i'm telling you you're gonna have to change the cycle and stop hiding under the stuff like saul that i did not no, my father i did not have a strong father you're gonna have to educate yourself and see the necessity to move forward maybe the father you had had his own challenges yeah and was therefore not a great role model maybe your divorce or was never married and they're living out of the home where your children live maybe you're working to a schedule of parental visit i want to talk to some real people this morning maybe you are hurt as you watch your children being brought up by another man maybe all of these a situation that you are facing maybe all of these scenarios you see, they are so common in our world today. As a matter of fact, they're so common that they actually now look like the norm. However, however, in verse 1 to 3 of our text, we are reminded of the core things, of the fundamental role of a father. And these are to make a point of listening, listening to the word of God as it is relevant and important to society today. But not only 
Are you listening to the word of God, but also listening to your children? Understand that they have a view. Understand that they have an opinion. When I was growing up, it wasn't so much of a right that you had as a child, but we understand that over the years, we have to make adjustment and begin to educate yourself. And so you've got to listen because oftentimes children and young people also have a valid point that need to be counted. We need to pay attention to what God is saying as there are lessons to be learned from how we deal, how we dealt with Israel. So there are lessons to be learned how God dealt with Israel so that we can apply um, some of these skills in dealing with our people and our children today. We are to speak as in teach and pass on the lessons that we have learned in the past. And so we see that Israel was reminded that they should tell the other generation coming about the faithfulness of God, about the goodness of God. We should never forget where God has taken us from. Amen. And pass that on to the oncoming generation. For us as African Caribbean people who came to the England, or came to England and our parents came here in the end of the 50s. They had challenges. They went to places to worship. And while they bowed their heads to worship and believed that they were in their mother country, worshiping the true and living God, only to find someone tapping them on the shoulder to tell them, you are not welcome here. There is another place down the road that cater for your sort. What sort is that? I don't know. But when you look today, what God has done for us, when you look where God has brought us from, when you look how God has established us, then we must tell the generation coming behind us about the goodness of God. We must tell them about the faithfulness of God. Hallelujah. We we should never refrain from sharing, amen, where God has taken us from, amen. We give him glory and honor and praise. And so we know that the role of the father is to teach the children. It is appointed to us as men for what is a, it's a core part of the purpose of being a father. And when we talk about purpose, when we talk about purpose, we are looking at the reason for which someone is created. So I'm talking about a purposeful father. And part of the purpose of the father, amen, is to share with their children the goodness of God. Principles that will help to empower that generation to deal with the world that is ahead of them. And when we talk about purpose, we're talking about yeah, something is done something that is done something that is created or uh, for which it exists that what for what you exist when we talk about purpose you see no matter what your circumstances may be today there is still purpose on the inside of you your purpose must be discovered your purpose must be developed and your purpose must be deployed. If it is to have any impact and help to reverse the negative trend that is impacting our homes and impacting our society today, then we must begin to implement the purpose for which we were created and the purpose for which we were made. One of the key things that underpin a father's purpose, it's legacy. You see, a good father, a, check this out, a good father may leave an inheritance, but a great father leave a legacy. And when I talk about the legacy, I'm talking about more than money. I'm talking about things that are far more valuable for this legacy would be so impactful. My little grandson, Omari, and I, 
um, met up recently. We are still observing social distances, but we were close enough to talk. And, I, I, and he said, Granddad, I, I want to preach. And I said, come on. So I gave him a fake mic, uh, and I sat there, and I began to teach him to preach. I said to him, say after me. And he, in his little voice, he said, say after me. I said, I love the Lord. He said, I love you, Lord. I said, I love you, Jesus. I said, I love you, Jesus. I just want you to know that God been good to me. He's only four years young, but I have a responsibility to train him. If the actors can train their children to become young actors and this one can train their child to become footballers, then I got a writer as a servant of God, as a grandfather, amen, to make sure that I'm passing on what God has given to me to the generation that is coming after me for a good man leave it an inheritance to his children's children while the wealth of the wicked are laid up for the just and we have amen this opportunity to make sure that we begin to empower the next generation to come so can you imagine that if they have your training with the education that is available to them there is nothing that they will not be able to do they will soon understand that they have come to the planet to be a game changer but we have a responsibility to empower them to allow them and teach them to believe in themselves teach them how to defy all the odds that are stocked against them let them know uh, that a man is never defined by the color of his skin but by the content within to teach them that they have come to the planet with greatness on the inside of them that they have come to the planet to make a significant change we need to leave them a legacy brothers and sisters this legacy would be so impactful that it would pass on from generation to generation according to verse 6 of the base text and I want every man listening to this message to ask yourself the question what am I doing today what am I known for today? And what will I be remembered for when I've left the planet? You know, I've read in the Bible about a man by the name of Methuselah who lived for 969 years. And if you read about all you've ever read about, Methuselah is a he begot, he begot, he begot. And then he was gone and Jesus came on the planet and only lived for 33 and a half years. And 2,000 years later, if there's a name that is on the lips of people around the world, over some two point something billion people, it's the name of Jesus Christ. So hallelujah. You see, it wasn't just about the years that he lived, it was about the contribution and the impact that he made in the years that he was here. So when you're gone, I'm telling you, I remember coming to this place back from Jamaica when I was only 19 years young and now I'm more senior in my years and realized that there was something that I was able to do physically I never felt no effect and if I try those same things now amen it's not so easy but I so I realized that I'm getting more senior and more mature in my years but the question I have to ask myself this morning Joel Thomas when you are gone when the Lord calls you home what are you going to be remembered for? Because whatever I'm going to be remembered for is the legacy that I'm leaving, amen, for the children, not just biological, but for those that I'm leading. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know a great father will make it his life goal to leave something of lasting impact for his children. Let me say that again. You know, I bought myself a ring and I got it, I bought it in Israel and I had it engraved uh, and my plan is that I'm going to leave that ring to my son and then my son is to leave that ring to his son and his son is to leave that ring and one thing they know when they pick that ring up they're going to know that there was a man here at some point by the name of Joel M. Thomas but even more than that uh, what I try to do is to teach my children the fear of the Lord uh, that is the beginning of all wisdom and pray that they will teach that to their children and to their children children the question is that what are you going to be remembered for 
when you're gone, I want you to know great fathers will make it their life goal to leave something of lasting impact to their children, not cars, because they drive them fast and they'll write them off and they'll deteriorate. Not houses, because unless you pay for them fully, they might not pay the mortgage and the houses might be repossessed. Oh, I'm talking about something that is deeper than just material thing. He will want to ensure that the life of his children will grow up to have and do better than they have done. I want you to know this morning that your children can do better than you have done. And just by the virtue of lifting a child and putting a child on your shoulders and the child is looking down, the child can see further on down the road than you can see. And that is how we are to empower our children, ladies and gentlemen, and give them the confidence that they can do better. There has to be a change then. How can they do better? You might ask me, Bishop, thank you for asking. And now I'll tell you that there has to be a change in the narrative the narrative from negative self talking down to yourself now you got to change and begin to confess the powerful word of god begin to talk the word of god mix it with faith and stop blaming the world stop blaming society and everybody's talking about the damage that this has done and oh yes history proved that it has done that but are you just going to live in history there are you going to make a positive impact and try to address the issue come on here not just living in the past but begin to embrace yourself for now and the future as men we have to be determined that no matter what the predictions of the world may be concerning the future of our country and of our world and the economy I want you to know that we will be purpose in doing better better for the future of our children we need to put plans in place we need to educate our children I'm talking to real men this morning you need to go to the parent teachers meeting you need to let the teachers know that you are interested in your children's education when they come home from school when last of you check their homework to see how well that they are progressing come on I'm talking about changing the narrative I'm talking about doing something different because if you keep on doing the same thing over and over again you're going to get the same result so in order for you to have a different result then you got to do something different and what we must do is to change the narrative and change our attitude and understand that a responsibility of bringing up your children it is not with the nursery it's not with the after school club I'm sorry it's not with the primary school it's not with the secondary school no it's not with the university no it's up to you and myself as father and as parents I feel like preaching I'm gonna start to close you know but listen here for King David he fought over 300 wars I need you now defeating the enemies of his days that's what he did so that when his son Solomon yeah when Solomon came to the throne Solomon never had to fight one single war why didn't he have to fight any war because his father David fought all the wars and took care of Solomon's enemy I want to shift the enemies of David's time to the enemies that is up operating in our world today but I want to ask you men this question what enemies do you have to defeat today in order to make life better for your children tomorrow it's your question I said what enemy will you have to defeat today in order to make life better for your children tomorrow here we are is it the enemy of ignorance by taking yeah you what you do you're talking yourself out of the goals and talking yourself out of ambitious things you begin to impose limits
it on yourself because you simply don't believe that you can achieve it. You got to take care of that enemy. Is it the enemy of procrastination and of mediocrity when day after day and week after week, months after months and years after years and decade after decade, you've been missing great opportunities and you're settling for less because you can't a feeling a Holy Ghost. You can't make a decision yeah, because you're a fear of failure. But I come by to tell you, you're a fear of rejection. But while you are afraid of imposing or implementing what God has given to you, you will never make uh, the impact that God want you to make. Uh, is it the enemy of self-pity? Yeah, you have become so, yeah, so obsessed with your own hurt. Huh? You've become so obsessed with your own pains, uh, pains of the past uh, that you can't see anything positive uh, in the future. But I stop by to tell you this morning, uh, it is time to arise and shine uh, for the light has come. Uh, the glory of the Lord uh, has been revealed to you. You came onto the planet uh, with a purpose. The Bible said uh, many are the plans in a man's heart uh, but it is the Lord's purpose that will prevail. Brothers, it's time to shake yourself uh, from the dust uh, and begin to see yourself the way that God see you. Is it the enemy of having inferiority complex? Thinking that everyone else is better than you. And that's a big thing. You think that everyone, there's no man on the planet, no woman that is better than me. As a matter of fact, I'm in my own league. I'm not comparing myself with nobody. Why? Because I was uniquely created, uniquely made. One of a kind, divine design right from his mind. Stop comparing yourself with other people. Then begin to feel inferior constantly comparing yourself with others seeing yourself as listen when you're starting to do that you begin to see yourself as gross uppers and you begin to see others as giant check this out because when they came back and spoke to Joshua come on it didn't say that the people over them they said it was their confession they saw themselves as gross uppers and the other people as giant you see the way you see yourself is the permission you give to others how to see you. The way you treat yourself, I feel your Holy Ghost, it's the way that you give others the permission to treat you. I'm going to close. Stay with me. I'm calling out to all men to make it their gold in 2020. I'm calling out to all men. Make this your goal in 2020 to discover the reason for which you have been placed on the planet Earth. Huh? Discover the reason. You know, I said recently, I don't want to die. Not because I got any fear that I'm not going to make heaven, but no, because I've discovered my purpose. I've sync, I've synchronized with my purpose. Have you ever noticed that a bird doesn't struggle to fly? Have you ever noticed that a fish doesn't struggle to swim? Oh, come with me. You know why? Because they've synchronized with their purpose. Only when you take them out of their environment that the struggle begins. You take the fish out of the water and it's not capable of displaying its skill anymore. You take a bird out the sky and begin to put it in a cuba or something like a cage, then you realize that it's not able to do things to its potential. But you let that thing back into its natural habitat and you be, you would just be so alarmed to see what I'm saying. I, I feel in the Holy Ghost, I'm almost done, but I, I want you to know you, you really need to discover your purpose and make your life become purposeful. Come on, understand why you are placed on this planet, the reason for which you exist. And I want you to hear this next statement. I want you to ask yourself the question, the reason for which you exist. You see, the until you discover your purpose, you're merely existing, wandering through life. No real purpose. Just wandering, going with the wind, jumping and the bandwagon. Listen, don't jump on bandwagon. 
make your home. If you jump on the bandwagon, it means that someone has already invented it and it's likely that they're driving it. Well, tell you what happened. If they're driving it, they're going to be going into the direction they want to go, not the direction that you want to go. But if you becomes an inventor, oh, Holy Ghost, if you becomes an inventor, come on. And some people talk about, oh, I can't find a path. That's great. If there's no path, then create one. Create one and get to where God has appointed for you. Listen here. The saddest thing about this is that whatever we do will impact <laughs> the life of our children. I got real cool, good relationship with my children. I don't mind telling you. And somebody, I'm not boastful. I invested in it. Even though I was a preacher, even though I was a full-time pastor, I made sure I made time for my children. I didn't want them to grow and rebel against God and think that their father gave more affection to the church than they gave to his children. No. But I watch my son, especially, as he become, uh, is coming into his more, shall I say, senior years. And I see certain traits and certain behavior in him. I sometimes I thought, oh my God, I cannot. That was Joel Thomas those years ago. That's right, you work it out. But this is true, ladies and gentlemen. Let's just be real. Let's be real about things, you know? Amen. Are we going to influence the life of our children? Amen. As adults, they're looking at you. Society is crying out for men to reclaim their role in society. Sometimes you hear men talking about um, the woman is this or the woman. Is, no, no, no. You know, she's bossy and said, no, 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 no. I tell her what happened. She's not, you know. What really happened, she marry you or she's with you looking for leadership. That's why she came with you looking for leadership. And she can't find the leadership in you, so she assumed the role. Don't go ahead blaming the sister. It's not wrong with the sister. Come on now. She's looking for leadership in you. She's looking for guidance in you. And when she can't find it, then she assumed the role and people begin to talk about that she's the one who wear the pants. You gave it to her. I'm sorry. You know, I'm not sure. I'm just saying it the way it is. You know, I'm just saying it the way that I conduct my life. I'm just saying it the way that the Bible teaches us to behave ourselves. The way the Bible teaches us that we should be example. Sometimes a man doesn't even know a wife is a reflection of the man. Come on, whatever you give to the woman, she will, she will incubate that and give that back to you. You want a happy life? Get a happy wife. Come on, you got to understand these things, brothers. We are carrier of the seed. Society is crying out. Crying out for men to stand up and assume the role that God has given to us. We're not fighting for it. Homes are crying out for men to stand up and be fathers and be leaders, leaders to the next generation. Find your purpose. And someone, we know the current thing that is taking place, amen, from the situation in America with George Floyd, and someone asked me recently that as a minister of religion, do you believe that people should protest? And I said, yes. I think people should protest, but you should protest purposefully. And just by making a, a, a protest and waving a banner, that's not going to change the decision makers. What we need to do is to begin to assume our role and responsibility and get into the place of influence. Get to the place where decisions are made and begin to represent, uh, amen, the, the, the tribe you come from. Or begin to represent, amen, the, the culture you begin to make a representation there. You can't change it any other way by going down and just making some noise and you Using the opportunity to loot. No, 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 no. That's not what it's all about. Read the word of God and see how we can impact and how we can change our world. Be purposeful about life and don't just wander through life. I'm done. And then in verse 4 of the text, for here we see, well, Psalm 78, they say, We will not hide them from the children but tell to the coming gen in other words stop hiding about what God has done for you I'm blessed 
blessed. God has been good to me. But my children know where God has brought me from. They know that I was born in England. They know that I was grown up in Jamaica. They know that I knew what poverty and hardship looked like. They know I had to ride a bicycle for how many miles to go to school. As a matter of fact, last year, when they went to Jamaica and they saw the journey that their father had to ride all the way to go to school, they said to me that they, they celebrated me more. Now they understand the tenacity that I have. Come on here, somebody. Let them know where God has taking you from for those of you amen especially from african caribbean back i'm um, descendant who have come to the united kingdom let your children and your grandchildren know where god has taken you from let them know that you were living in one room and that one room was the kitchen it was the bathroom it was the lounge and also the bedroom let them know amen that you know you you were not welcome in certain places let them know what god has done for you now because now they will learn to appreciate amen what God has done for you be purposeful you owe it to them you need to talk to them about the psalmist said amen in 78 4 about the glorious deeds of the Lord talk about the might and the wonders that God has done stop taking the glory begin to think that all that I have is what I achieve you know had it not been for the goodness of God had it not been for the grace of God had it not been for the help of the almighty God you would not have been able to achieve what you have let your children know what God has done what the psalmist then mean in that we will not hide the good or the bad which we have learned from the past but we are willing to share and to pass on the warning and the instructions and the teaching to our children for the next generation i'm done for these are virtues talk to them about our culture talk to them about our customs teach them these things which will help to shape them for the future but not only with help to shape them is help to shape us today for the persons that we have become let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen I'm closing I'm done I'm not giving nobody that right to determine what I'll be in life that's that's something that God has given to me and if it means that I have to work hard if it means I've got to sacrifice if it means that I have to educate myself I will do whatever I need to do continually discovering the potential that is locked up on the inside of me these are these are quality that we need to teach our children good better best may it never rest till your good be better your better become your best teach them you've done good you can do better when they've done better tell them well done your best is yet to come come on don't expect other people from the outside to put these values into your children make time I know we live in a world today and there's a lot of gadgets, a lot of IT stuff. And let me tell you, gadget and IT won't raise your children well. Come on, you got to turn them off sometime and, and, and begin to talk to them. Talk to them. Let them ask you questions and, and answer them questions according to the age that they are. And no wonder they say that we make better grandparents than we are as parents. Because I tell you, there's a different level of tolerance and openness that I can have with my grandchildren than I maybe could have with their parents. As a matter of fact, you know, I pronounced a word the other day and it wasn't pronounced properly in the Queen's English. And Nala, she's only five, not even five. And she says, say that again, granddad. And she was actually laughing at the pronoun. I said to her, look, sweetheart, I said, I raise your dad. And no, but you know what? I went away from there and I realized it is another gen Did I rebel? Oh, no, no. I'm so grateful that I have someone around me who can help to bring me correction in a loving way. Come on, I didn't resent it. You're a five year old. Do you want me to? 
No, 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 no. I embrace what she was saying. Listen, we can use the experience of life as excuse. Or we can embrace them and begin to find our purpose. To exist in this life, you can use them as experience to find your purpose in life. Let it. Whatever we choose, we will all leave a legacy to be remembered for something. So my question has got to be with you in closing. What will you remember for? What will be yours? What will be your legacy? Will it be one that it will be said of you, he was, he was a purposeful father. I'm inviting you men to come out. Stop hiding behind the past. Stop hiding that maybe your father wasn't there. Stop hiding that maybe your father did not invest enough time. As a matter of fact, stop hiding that maybe, yes, your father has never encouraged you. He's never put his hands around you and tell you, son, you can make it. Stop hiding. The man with the mic that is talking to you, he went through all of that too. Come on. Loving son, never met my father. My father died here in England while I was still residing in Jamaica. Do I love the man to bits? Come to my home and you will see his picture on my mantelpiece. You know what? I, I made peace. What I told myself is that I'm going to be the best father that I could ever be. Come on, men. Let's rise up to the role you don't have to struggle or fight for the role the role has already been given to you the fact that you're a man question are you going to make your life purposeful are you going to impact the world not just your children biological but to all those that you have an opportunity to influence i want to admonish you this father's day make your life purposeful I want you to bow your heads just right where you are just right where you are right where you are just bow your heads and talk to your father Papa Abba Source thank him for life thank him that you're here on the planet by appointment not coincident but intentionally. Oh, Rabba Shaka Rabba Sandai. Do excuse me for one moment. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on. Stop feeling self pity. Stop talking down to yourself. You don't need to do that. There's, there's enough people around you that are doing that. You don't need to join with them to compound that. Break from it in the name of Jesus and discover your purpose many are the plans in a man's heart it is the lord's purpose that prevail before you were formed in your mother's belly god knew you before you came to planet earth he set a seal of approval upon you the plans he have for you are good plans these are not plans to harm you but to give you hope and to give you a future stop hiding come on some people are trying to medicate the problem come on Come on, trying to find that. No, don't deal with it. Come on, unearth it and you know, get it out the way so you can strive. Be the person that God wants you to be. Come on, Father, your daughter's looking at you. Come on, Father, your sons are looking at you. What are you going to teach them? Come on, those grandchildren that have come by you and dropped by you, I tell you, Flick my phone on this morning and in my family WhatsApp group, I saw my little granddaughter, Nola, little seven months old Titan, sitting in his chair singing, trying to sing to you. Happy Father's Day, granddad. Happy Father's Day to you. And I thought, how nice.
Come on, get in touch with your emotion. We were told men are not emotional and we shouldn't be. We need to show ourselves mature. Get real. Let people understand that you got real feeling, real emotions. You're raising a son that is going to be a husband one day. You're raising a daughter that is going to be a wife one day. Come on. Love them. Come on, Father. Hug and your daughter. Squeeze them when you are permitted to do so. May me immediately after the restriction is lifted. Tell them you love them. You know, when you do that, you are meeting an emotional need that they have. And they're understanding that love is pure. And not the first man that they would meet that give them a hug that they believe that's what love look like. Oh, she's going to go, oh, I'm used to that. I'm used to my daddy hugging me. I'm used to my daddy kissing me and telling me he loves me. Come on, man. Let's just get, let, let's just get real with ourselves. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you so much for today. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you, God, that you are a purposeful father. We've seen your purpose fulfilled in our lives. Thank you for calling us out of darkness and put us into your marvelous light. But I thank you, Father, you've made us real people, that we can become relevant to the world in which we live, not just spiritualizing things and not trying to deal with real life issues. But we thank you for the manual, the Bible. Thank you for the answers that are in the word of God. And as we study them and begin to apply them to our lives, that we're becoming better men. I bless every man today under the hearing of my voice. Every man. And I pray that this message would have challenged them and myself to look in the mirror and begin to do a self-examination if my life is as purposeful as it was designed to be. Touch every man, we pray. Oh, minister to every man. There might be some men, Father, today who are suffering from rejection. I pray that that burden, Lord, would be lifted now in Jesus' name and that they would know without a shadow of doubt that they are accepted. If the men that are suffering with complex, inferiority complex that has been brought on by something of the past, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you'll minister to them now in the name of Jesus, that as they begin to discover their purpose, they'll begin to come out of those situations. Maybe their men, Father, who are procrastinators, who really want to do things but never really find a true motivation to implement. I pray today that through the help of the Holy Spirit, Father, that they will mobilize themselves. <laughs> And step out, Lord, understanding that it is a step of a righteous man that is ordered by Almighty God. Maybe there are men who have had their emotions crushed one way or another. Father, I pray for them. Maybe there are men who have been abused, Lord, psychologically or physically, this might be. I pray now in the name of Jesus, Father. Amen, that you would minister to them. Let them seek for help, Lord. If they need to come to terms and to go to counseling or to a place where help can be offered, I pray you'll give them the grace and the boldness, Father, to do something, whatever they do, not to sit in the current situation, not doing anything. The narrative must change if we're going to be purposeful. In the name of Jesus. Maybe there are men who need to re-educate themselves and apply themselves today. Just give them the grace to do so. Father, we love you today. We praise you for all that you have invested in us. That you are a good, good father. And we thank you 
in Jesus' name. I just wonder today, if you've sat through this message, you've listened today to the word of God, you've been encouraged by the word of God to be a purposeful father, but you yourself haven't really reciprocated in totality to the love of your heavenly father the one who just love you greater love had no man than this a man lay down his life for his friend and maybe you're struggling you look in our churches today it's amazing to see the ratio of women to men yet still the men ought to be the leaders but I want you to know today that you can experience the love of God just where you are. You can come to know him who to know his life eternal. I just want you to know he's one of those fathers who just loves you. Oh boy, I wish, you know, you know, like the prodigal son, the father to the prodigal son. You know the story how the prodigal son took his stuff and he went and lived wild and he blew it and girls, he blew it and entertainment he blew it when he had no more his so-called friends reject who am i talking to now his so-called friends rejected him he went to a citizen to look for a job and they had no job and so all he had to do a jewish boy feeding swine that's what happened when you fall from grace fall from amazing grace to disgrace Jewish boy feeding swine, eating the ox, what the pigs didn't want. You know pigs eating habits, atrocious. And it was after the pigs were finished eating, he was eating what was left. Gruesome. But the Bible said he came to himself. I'm talking to somebody. Today is your day to come to yourself. And he asked himself the question, why am I out here doing this? When my father have so many hired servants, why am I out here living this type of life? And he make a decision. I want you to hear me. I said, he made a decision. Holy Ghost, you're helping me now. He made a decision that is not staying out there in that condition one more day. I'm talking to you right now. You need to make a decision on today that you're not staying one more day in this. You are going to run to your father because he's already there waiting for you. Prodigal son begin to make his way home. The Bible said, and his father saw him a far way come. The reason why the father was able to see him a far away coming, the father was always looking for the return of his son. I'm talking to you because God is always looking for your return. He wants you home. You are his child. You know the story very much that the son came home. Father killed a fatted calf. Got him a robe. And I tell you, because he was a rich man, you now got to, you got to think that this thing must be silk. This is no cheap boy stuff. Got him a ring. Clean him up. God wants to clean you up, man. I don't care what's happening to you today. I don't care how far you have fallen. He can take you out of the miry clay and put your foot up on a rock to stay. He threw a party, and this he said, it's a time for celebration. My son that was lost is now found. Would you be that son or you want to be that daughter? You can be a prodigal son or a prodigal daughter. It doesn't matter. When it comes to God, gender doesn't really matter. Come on. All I'm saying to you, you can come home. Come home. Why don't you get your hand on your heart and just say to him, Father, I thank you so much for loving me. I thank you so much for caring for me. Thank you so much for persevering. Thank you so much that you have never given up on me. Tell him I acknowledge my shortcomings. I acknowledge my failure. But I also acknowledge that you have never changed your mind and your love towards me. Tell him, and Father, I thank you for the opportunity that I'm going to respond to right now. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. To the place where I belong. I'm coming home to the place that is reserved for me around my father's table. 
tell him father i thank you that i'm forgiven thank you that my past is behind thank you that i am cleansed thank you lord i am accepted thank you i'm not rejected but i've been accepted by the father tell him i now confess jesus christ you are my savior you are my lord and i thank you that eternity is in view but let me tell you now if you've prayed that prayer and if you have made that confession you're home you are a child of the living God and there's nothing I mean absolutely nothing am I not gonna have any more difficulty and challenging tomorrow Bishop oh yes you will because Rome wasn't built in a day but daily a new journey has begun I want you to know that just before we sign off I want to remind you that we're gonna be back ministering with you on Wednesday last Wednesday we had a tremendous 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 time of ministry several hundreds of people tune into the program <clears throat> so we're gonna be back on Wednesday night with our Bible teaching please note that you can now join our live stream session on Facebook we'll also be having a prior meeting on um, Friday evening and that's doing very well we got people from all around the world amen that are tapping into it right now not only that if having just spoken to you something has moved within your spirit and you'd like to talk to someone about a continual relationship with Jesus Christ if you'd like to speak in confidence with with someone about something that you're going through we've provided for you we want to be a ministry that is relevant to our world you'd like to find out more those information they're all together on screen you are able to get in touch with someone who will be able to assist you you can find out more about us on our Facebook page listen here we are also very thankful for your ongoing financial support boy am I grateful to God for the faithfulness of God's people that they still understand that even with this pandemic and furlough and locking down that we still have responsibilities and the people that are stepping up to those responsibilities we are grateful and I just want to encourage you to continue in your, the one thing I'm not going to do you know it doesn't matter how long this thing go in here not one day am I coming here with this mic to beg because it's not my principles that I've grown up and believe I'm never going to beg God will make a way God will create an opportunity to make sure that his kingdom continually be provided for. So I want to encourage you then if you are making payments, you can pay directly online by box transfer. Or you can pay over the counter at your bank or your building society. Or you can set up a direct debit or standing order. Failing all of those, you might choose to send a check posted to the church office, which is the Globe, 12 Portman Road, Reading, RG 31EA. And of course, do make those checks payable to Church of God Worldwide Mission International, or you might choose to abbreviate that to COGWWMI. I feel like praying right here for somebody's financial breakthrough. I'm not just going to stand up here and asking you to send money for the work of the Lord when you have a need in your homes right now. I want you to lift your hands to the Father and tell him, I know you will provide for me. Tell him, you are my Father and the responsibilities of a father is to provide for his children now tell him and I am your child tell him and I thank you right now Papa I thank you right now daddy 
that you are providing for me. You're making a way. You're not going to see me become embarrassed. Tell God, Lord, my home is not going to be repossessed, Lord. Tell him, Lord, the services and the utilities to my home, they're not going to be cut off because you're going to provide for me. Tell God, I'm not going to go to bed without eating unless I'm fasting and choose to fast because you're going to put bread on my tell him in the name of Jesus. Tell him, Daddy, I cry out to you. Tell him, and this Father's Day, I reach out to you with the assurance that you're already reaching out towards me. Tell him, Lord, the, the business that I'm trying to do, and it, it just seems as if it's difficult. In the, I pray now, Father, for your divine intervention. Because I know that the hurt is the Lord. Tell him the fullness thereof, the world and everything that dwells in it. Tell him I'm a seed of Abraham. Tell him I'm a covenant child. Tell him I will not lack. The Lord is my shepherd. You'll make a way for me. And tell him, Father, in Jesus' name, I take authority over every barrier, over every obstacle that will try to blight my opportunities. I command them now in the name of Jesus to give way. And tell him now, I thank you that the door that you have opened for me can't nobody close it. Huh? And you have opened a door for me, Father. I will walk through it, my God, in obedience and trust you, Father God. You are my provider in the name of Jesus. And tell him heavenly father in the name of Jesus tell him I rebuke the devourer anything that would try to make a demand amen on my finances on my resources father I, I resist them now in the name of Jesus and I declare that I'm blessed and I'm highly favored and that you're making a way for me Lord tell him I thank you Lord God that the way that you're making for me does not depend on the economical climate that is happening around me because my help cometh from the Lord, the one who made the heaven and made the earth. Father, I thank you. Oh, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. Thank you for all that you have done for me. And I give you glory. Oh my God. I give you honor. And I give you praise. In Jesus' name. Um, and I just wonder if there's anybody out there that feels as blessed and as challenged, amen, as I feel today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I can just feel the presence of God in this place. Just take one moment. Just keep on playing for me right there. Just take one moment. I know it's time to go, but I just got to do what God told me to do. Just take one moment and tell him, Lord, I thank you. Come on, Holy Spirit. I thank you, 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 I thank you. Yes, yes, I thank you. I'm a purposeful man, purpose to my life. And now, for the grace. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May you shout for joy over your salvation. And may you, in the name of our God, establish our banner. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. And be gracious unto you. The Lord, Jehovah, lift up the light of his countenance upon you. May he grant you peace may he grant you success and you will know uncommon favor is your portion to all the men one last time happy father's day god bless you we look forward in you joining us when we'll be coming to you on the next time with a living word from the living god until then from us at the globe remain blessed in jesus name amen